being that the majority already knows who I am and I don't need to really introduce myself, a part of having to correct my names all the time by saying Nadira instead of Nadira. And Sheikh Salam had mentioned. No, no, you were right. You were right. Don't worry. Um, for the sake of time, definitely uh, I'll go through the whole session as fast as I can before even I get the five minutes flashcard. And then it comes to one minute and the time out. So um, today's session, as part of sustainability, I'm going to cover a topic on communication. But before I go into that, I just would like to give a quick introduction to the company that I work in as Renaissance Services. And Renaissance Services is one of the eldest um, Omani organization. And I'm not going to go through all of this uh, information, but what I want to emphasize on is that we have over 9,000 staff. And uh, they are from 23 nationalities. And with these two key informations, which is going to continue with my next presentations. Uh, our main operation is in facilities management, being hard services and soft services. As many of you would know Renaissance as a Taos, but Taos is under the Renaissance group. So we have about 9,000 staff who are scattered across the country. Uh, with 23 nationalities, they don't mean that they are all educated. They come from different backgrounds and different nationalities, uh, with different also intellectual levels as well as experience. So the question that comes back to you guys and ladies, how effective is communication at your workplace? Can anyone in here raise their hands to say that they are about 80% of communication positivity within their workplace? Okay, no 80? 60? 99. 99, that's impossible. <laughs> 50, 40, okay, there's two, three, four hands raised. 20%? At least? One percent? That means zero percent for the majority? Wow. Does this uh, give us an indication that we are actually imposing more risk by not having proper communication in the, in the companies? It seems to be the case. So let me start with a video first, and I'll continue with that. Uh, Just focus on the video, please. Volume, please. Volume. Volume. Double chocolate chip What was his order, in fact? What did he actually want? It? He just wanted triple shots espresso, and that was it. But he ended up with all of this to buy because the communication was not that clear for, for the other person who's receiving it. And this is the key. If you are not really clear with what you want to ask the other person to actually provide you of a service, then you will always end up with the wrong result. So the topic that I'm going to speak about communication in a company that has diversity, multicultural individuals, and what does diversity mean in, in, uh, in a proper uh, term? Diversity is about embracing differences and recognizing the amazing things that others have and when it's within into an organization culture. So being a company that we have about 23 different uh, nationalities, how does this affect us? It's not really a negative thing to have diverse people. In fact, it's even better. You have a lot of people coming from different places, different knowledge, different experiences, and you always at least find one of them, at least, who can give a good impact into the company and will be a positive person into uh, improving the work um, process or work uh, activities. So diversity, it's about different things that we have. 
being a language, nationality, gender, physical abilities, culture, job levels. And all of this can play a big chance for us to have a proper jigsaw in here. And the way for us to include it is by having a proper communication. So the communication is a process of information shared between one person to the other or a party to the other. And it has to be a give and take process. Otherwise, it would never be a communication if it's just one way and the other side cannot really give back any kind of feedback. There can be different ways of communication, but that the typical types that can be a positive one is here by having proper verbal communication and nonverbal. Nonverbal is you being a person who can uh, actually demonstrate what you want other people to do in the same way that you expect it to be done. And the verbal one can be in different formats, either written or, or visuals. And when we say visuals, it can be either by pictogram, videos, uh, short uh, stories, and it can be effective. So most of the time, the communication comes into two little percentages. Most of the time, when it comes to verbal and oral, it's 35% effect on a person. And the remaining is what you present as a body language, facial expressions, and your gestures. So you can be in a meeting, and you can give a positive message verbally, but if your body language does not represent that and does not reflect it, sorry, it will not give the right message to anyone. And it could be, be the other way around. You can be a very calm person, your body language can be positive, but your tone of really sending that, the information can give a complete different meaning to what you are trying to say, and it will always be understood wrongly. So you always have to balance between what you are presenting and what you are stating. It has to be honest and open and two ways. There is a difference between hearing and listening. Many people don't understand or don't realize what's the difference between the two. But the hearing is when you actually have a person sitting in front of you, the message can be only heard but not really inserted into the mind. But what, when you have the person listening to you, where you are actually engaging the person with their minds and the body, then they will perceive the messages in, a, in the proper way of what you're trying to tell them. So there are different types of communication, or different styles. <coughs> we have director, we have analyzer, socializer, and relator. Sorry, it's not really clear because of the background in there. But you can Google them, and you can find a proper one that will suit the way that you want to, do, to demonstrate or what you want to utilize in your organization. What's more important is to have a nice, friendly working environment to actually make sure that you are presenting the right information and it's perceived and it's a two-way, as we stated, to give the right results. So how can we really give an effective communication form? There are different things. By engagement, by engaging the individuals that you have at work. And it starts from the top to bottom and from bottom to the top, sideways, whatever types of hierarchy of organization that you have, everyone should be involved. Um, I don't know how many of you have been involved with uh, developing the ISO 45000. The main key element with the 45,000 is to actually engage your people. And this is where also is coming uh, with the importance of having to make sure that if you want 45 to be succeeding in your company, engage everyone, get the right requirement as the committees, everyone who's actually working on the front line, whatever other levels, as well as the leadership to be engaged to give the right decisions. Most of the time, those who are on the front lines will know better than us on how things are supposed to be done and we are there to support them, to direct them in how to do it safely. We're not telling them how to do their job specifically, but how to do it in a safe manner to avoid them to be at, at loss or at uh, accident or injuries. So some of the um, requirements of com effective communications. First of all, we need to understand the background of each person who is uh, being employed by our organization. And also understand where they're coming from and how they can actually contribute to the success of the organization. Also, we need also to pass on the information to them. And also, we need to have a cross-culture um, approach. So we need to build the awareness. We need to also uh, utilize their experiences. We have also to think about what they can add to the future and what they have at the moment and how we can actually uh, build a competencies that will be effective for us and for them. So in summary of the effective communication, you need to have this kind of an approach, a give-take, clear, and it's, uh, it's uh, friendly. 
most of the companies, they rely on the seven Cs, which is a clear communication, concise, concrete, correct, coherent, complete, as well as courteous. So once you have the seven Cs on board, it gives you the whole equation in a completion way so you can get the proper communication to everyone. What we do at Renaissance, we have different approaches, but the most way that we can, uh, I can demonstrate it in here, is when we have, uh, we call something called um, QHSC posters, and the awareness posters. The awareness posters can be of information that we choose randomly from our selected risks, and, uh, oh no, don't do that now. <laughs> Um, um, select, uh, selected of information that we want to pass on to our people, or it could be trends that we have managed to identify through our, through our inspections visits and we want them to be aware of, or it could be something that happens somewhere else and what we received as a sharing information and we want them to know about it. So uh, they can be in different uh, topics and we have five areas of the uh, quality assurance, health environment and food safety areas of posters, and we, what we do with communication is we actually translate them into three languages. We have English, Arabic, and Hindi. Out of the 23 nationalities, we have actually gathered that these are the three main languages that can pass on the information. And uh, the posters are sent to all sites and locations. They are to utilize these posters as part of their toolbox talks every morning or whatever the, the schedules that they have. And definitely, they will have a give and take uh, sessions to ensure that they are actually receiving the right information and they, the actual information that is in the poster is, is taken positively by them. So there are some examples of what we do. As what you see in Arabic and Hindi, we also have in different areas like food safety, safety raises specifically, environments, um, and we have of uh, the health, actual, uh, health section, which is occupational health, and different posters in here. And to end the session, somehow, I'm going to show you this video as the, the second video, which is a learning element to it, and how effective it is to have the communication. Uh, there. A pottery class in the United States, ceramics, making pots. And the teacher took half of the class, and she said, at the end of this term, your grade will be given on the weight of pots that you create. So, here is a weighing scale. At the end of the class, whoever's total production of pots weighs the most will get the highest grade. To the other half of the class, she said, you'll be evaluated on your most finished piece of pottery. The group that were told sheer weight what was their way of carrying on? Every day they produced five, six, seven pots. They tried random experiments. They tried weird things. They tried different ideas. But their hands were on clay from the first moment. The group that were told they would be evaluated on the most finished pot, they read, they thought, they talked about concepts. They talked about philosophical ideas. They read more. They went to galleries to look at other people's pots. And the first time they touched clay was about three days before the end of the class. All of the best pots were made by the group that focused on weight. So the message from this video is, if you are to communicate your values, the mission, mission, objectives, goals, benefits, security elements, targets, and plan to your staff in a clear message, something that they can understand and they know what is the benefit for them and what is for the organization, you always end up with a good result. So the real benefit is that you will have a clear communication power by mentoring them, by taking them as a team, members, valuable team members that you engage them and you get their thoughts and their ideas, for a better productivity and achieving the goal zero as everyone is trying to achieve in this life or in the com communications and the communities. Some facts, coming back to some incidents that happened in the past, you'll see that I've highlighted or bolded the black, which is to do with communication mistakes. The cost or the losses are in red, being 
um, life and souls, or by money or the financial cost. And these are all very well-known uh, incidents that took place in the past years, and they have been a major kind of, uh, um, of impacted accident that really had changed the rules and the legislations of health and safety across the board. And with that, I'll say thank you very much. <laughs>